Right, let's go and get this Mountfield lawnmower in. It's in a bit of a state, but as I say, it didn't cost anything. Let's see if we can get it running and see what the problem is with it, why it was gonna cost 120 pounds if he took it to a shop. Right, well, here it is. It's a champion. It looks like a very quite a big deck on it. I'm not too sure what it's got there. Uh, let's see what, when it was made. It was a 2008 model. And I can first thing I can notice is that it's got a big hole cut in the top of the recoil cover and there's no pull cord on it. And he did say to me that he'd done that because he was uh, starting it up with a drill. So that's what he was doing there. So I noticed that's gonna need repair or changing. I'm also seeing that there's no cable on there for the, the brake and there's also no lever as well for the brake as you can see there and the engine kill. So that's gotta be modified. There's also a bolt missing on the handle. We've got on this side, but it's loose. And I don't know whether they would have been quoted second-hand parts to change this or whatever, but at the end of the day, he wasn't gonna pay 120 pounds. Let's have a look at that cap. That cap looks like it may have split in the past, which is a common feature on this type of cap. It looks like there might be some sort of glue residue around there. Let's have a little look. Right, well, I would say that's probably been glued in the past, so that's probably had a repair done to it. Yeah, I think I can see a crack on there, but it seems to be holding. Whatever, whatever glue they've used there, it seems to be holding. So I'm not going to do too much with that at the moment. It doesn't have any fuel in it. The tank is bone dry. So although he told me it was running, I suspect that he's not had it running for a very long time. It's probably been sitting outside, as you can probably see there. There's water in the cap there and rust as well, which denotes to me that that's been standing for a hell of a long time. The good things about it is, is that the deck is complete, it's solid. Coming round it, there's very little problems with bodywork on it, although it's got a few scuffs on it, which you would expect. The wheels seem to have plenty of tread on it. It's got a grass bag or box or whatever, and it's complete, and it doesn't appear to have any breakages in that whatsoever. The flap seems to be in good order. The handles seem to be solid. The mountings are solid at the bottom, and they've got their original fixings on there. So I'm happy with that. What I need to do is to tip it up now, just to have a look underneath. Uh, we'll take that plug cap off. I know it's probably never gonna start in this condition, but uh, I will take that off as a matter of precaution. You wanna get into the habit of doing that. The wheel adjusters look all clean and solid. I will tip it back, but to do that, obviously, I need to take the grass box off. Let's put that down there, out of the way. And we will just tip it up. So in this condition, in this state, I can stand it Completely vertical, as you can see. The flap's not in the way, the handle's on the floor, and there's no way that's tipping back further, and the engine's still, the oil's still contained within the engine. Right, so underneath, we've got an engine that's rotating, actually, very, very easily. I'm not too sure what's happening there at all. Bearing in mind, I should have compression. There is a little bit of compression, but there's some old cord which is wrapped around the base there, so I will cut that off. But what's concerning me, that there, there doesn't appear to be any compression, or very, very little. So let me just get this off. We'll put it back on its face, now that I can see everything else is okay. There's a couple of small snails living in there. Yeah, they're still alive. So I'll look at them, look, I'll get them out and go and put them back in the garden, let them live. Right, there you go, you two, you can go and live over there. Let's put you next to each other, so that you can you're obviously a pair. There we go, and they're living in the wild again. <laughs> Just do a little bit for nature, Barney, eh? I'll tell you what, we won't mess about. We'll take this off, because whatever happens, if we have to change the engine over, if the engine is knackered, we've got to take the blade off anyway. So this is a 14 mil. Let's get that on there. There we go, and undo. There we go. What would we do about an impact gun, eh? a few taps there we go the pins are intact which is a good sign that it don't appear to have hit anything maybe there's no obvious signs of uh, the blade being hit although it's quite worn down there which is probably just where it's not been sharpened for years and years so let's just drop that back on its base and i'll be interested just to take the plug out to see what sort of state that plug's in right well it's an old uh, torch plug so it has obviously been changed at some stage. There we go. Let's have a little look. Well, it appears to be okay. It's a little bit dark, but uh, it seems to be okay. 
And I think what I'm going to do is to just screw me a compression tester into there just to see if we've got compression. So let's screw an adapter in there first. Like that, just to make it seal on the O-ring. Screw the rest of the tube driver. Again, compressing the O-rings. Clipping on our compression tester. There we go. And I'll turn it over with a drill and see what compression we get. Right, well, we've got about 80, 80, about 75, 80, 85 PSI there, which is fine, which that shouldn't be a problem. It should fire with that, so I'm happy that that's enough compression, which it didn't definitely feel like it, so let's reduce that. So we know we've got an engine with compression. Let's just have a little look under here as well. Again, I'm just doing a preliminary little look around here. We're not fault diagnosed. I'm going to be taking the carb off anyway. Well, that is obviously a homemade air filter to go on there. Someone's just cut a bit of sponge there, as you can see. I'm going to take this carb off anyway and give it a clean. And I'm going to take this recoil cover on. Obviously, we're going to need to change that. I think I've got a spare one. So we'll buzz off these three 10 mil screws. Like that. There we go. And as you can see, the recoil part has actually been removed from there as well, the pull cord part. So uh, that was never going to work anyway. Let's remove that. The linkages appear to be correct. I can hear it clicking, so that seems to be functioning correctly. I'll remove the fuel tank. I'll remove this guard. I'm going to take the exhaust off because I'm going to give it a coat of paint actually. I'll take the carburetor off, we'll strip that down and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, off with the uh, carburetor then, 310 mils. One holds onto the bracket, which is that one, and these two hold the carb in place. There we go. Just withdraw them, that should take the air filter off. Both the same length if you want to know. And what we've got at the back there is a hose going for the breather, the crankcase breather, and there's our cover plate out of the way. I'm gonna remove the fuel line now. There's a little clip there that pulls that back out of the way. Never easy, these type of clips. There we go. Can I just spin that off? I know there's no fuel in there. As you can see, if there was, I would have clamped it off. And always a good idea to make a note of your linkage. So if you're looking down on the carb there, you can see exactly where the linkages are connected. Always wise to take a picture so that you can refer to it afterwards. So let's just uh, get this first one out there like that. It's that little funny looking shaped linkage. I'll just leave that in there for the moment. And this one here, just turn the carb through 90 degrees and it's a little L shape and it comes out. As you can see, a little L shape there, it goes into that there. The butterflies are working correctly. That one there is the choke. And the one there is the throttle for the engine. So that's the carb off now. I'll give that a bit of a clean down first on the outside before we actually dismantle it and look inside. Right, here we go. This is the carburetor. Now, as you can see, there's loads of rubbish on the outside of that. Now, I don't want to take this apart until I've cleaned the outside of this because any part of this dirt entering inside one of the fine jets always can actually cause us more problems. So I like to just give it a good clean down first before we do any stripping down. It's just prudent to do this. And I'll just use a little brush just to wipe it down first of all, get the major part of the rubbish off. And once it's all softened, then I'll take it outside, just blow it off with the air hose. And as you'll probably see when I come back to you, how much cleaner and better it is to work with. Okay, there you go. Nicely cleaned off now and a lot more easier to handle and no fears of getting any crap put inside the uh, carburetor. So let's take the base off first. Now I do prefer to do these with uh, spanners and wrenches as opposed to um, battery operated tools because they're so powerful and carbs are so delicate, you've got to be careful. Right, okay, so we've got fresh fuel which appears to be coming out of the bowl. 
and there is some corrosion in there as you can probably see which indicates to me that that has been standing for a while bit of sludge in there as you can see so uh, we'll wipe all that out and clean that the gaskets come off on the top there as you can see and we'll just remove that pin lift the float out and the needle underneath it and that all appears to be in pretty good condition and the main problems you get here are the main jet which in this one is located in there and also the emulsion tube which should fall out of there it's a brass tube that comes out underneath the main jet and depending what type of carb you have some of them have a primary idling jet in there this one doesn't appear to have that so uh, we should be good to go with just taking the main jet out and the emulsion tube and one thing you do need is a good fitting screwdriver into the slot well i will get myself a briggs and stratton proper one but uh, again good fitting screwdriver is always essential in taking out the main jet because you don't want these stripping otherwise you can wave bye bye to the carburetor if you can't get it out tip it out now sometimes they fall straight out sometimes they don't and we'll have a little look at that well i can see through there that the main jet is actually clear but that doesn't mean to say that there could have been an issue with the slow running or the tick over it hunting and that normally occurs because the emulsion tube holes are blocked when it revs on higher revs so let's try and push that emulsion tube out there we go and if you can probably see there whether you can or not there's loads of little fine holes around that and that is the thing that blocks up because when the main jet lets the fuel in, the main jet is a constant size, obviously, and that just lets the fuel in. And depending on where the throttle position is, depends how much fuel is sucked through each of these little holes. So if some of these are partially blocked, then when you've asked for more fuel, it doesn't allow fuel to flow through all of them. So you need to make sure all of them are clear. And you only can do that if you can get the emulsion tube out. A lot of people just take the jet out and think that's it. You need to take this emulsion tube out because if your lawnmower operates at different rev ranges, it's going to hunt if these are partially blocked when it's asking for more fuel. So we'll clean all this. We'll give it a good blow through. It looks in pretty good condition, so I'm not going to bother with the ultrasonic cleaner in this case. Most of the work is done here. We'll blow the channels out inside and then we'll uh, reassemble it. So let's go and get some carb cleaner. And my old friend Pete Froud quite rightly said you can get attachments to there like the old, you know, with the WD-40 you get the tubes come off and it's a lot easier for squirting into a little carb venturi. I haven't got none of them, Pete, and I haven't get, even got none with a WD-40 tube. So if you know where you can buy them, them little tubes that go on the end of your cans, tell me because I'll get some. So we'll just blow through these jets. Now I want to put my goggles on with this because uh, you don't want to be getting this in your eyes. And I'll just blow through these jets to see if they're coming out. And I can see all, f all the fuel is coming out of all the different holes there. I can see that is absolutely fine. So I've got no issues with that at all. I'll do the same with the main jet. Good jet of fuel coming out of there. So I'm happy with that. I'll blow through the Venturis of the carb that comes from the fuel into the needle valve which is clear I'll clean out the emulsion tube avenue just to make sure that's clear and on on this car basically that's all you've got you've got no external jets no external alleyways that you can use I will clean around the gasket face just to get off any residue gasket that's on there and corrosion which there is a bit of corrosion there actually because I mean corrosion is a hard substance and if that sits on your gasket face the chances are it's going to leak so give that a good wipe down and also just give it a brush out just to make sure that the uh, channel is clear Right, well, basically, that is it. That carb didn't need much uh, maintenance whatsoever. I'll just give it a blow through now with the airline. I like to do that afterwards as well. So basically, with carbs, if you haven't got an ultrasonic cleaner, use your carb spray. And as Pete 
quite rightly said, with certain carbs, you need that long nozzle where you can get it inside jets and stuff. That's a little bit risk, too restricted. So clean the carb out like that. And then also blow through with the uh, airline as well. You've got to be careful with the needle valve seat. In some of them, if you've got a needle valve, this one's got a little rubber end on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a little pointed rubber end on that. With well, a little pointed rubber end on there is the seal, and that seats into a brass seating. But some of these little ends on them are made out of brass, and in which case you'll have a little rubber O-ring inside the seal there. So be careful not to blow out if you've got one that's got a, a brass end on the needle. Be careful not to blow out the little rubber O seal in there. This one's okay, so I can blow through that no problem. Blow through all the Ventura as you can. There is a couple at the back there I did forget to mention. There is a pilot circuit there, but uh, there's not adjustable. And they all meet up with the main fuel chamber there. Now they're clear, I can, I can hear it coming through. So blow through with the uh, carb cleaner and then straight afterwards, hit through with your, with your airline. Well, I'm happy that that carb is now clean. All that's left for me to do is to clean the bowl out and I'll put some carb cleaner in there and have a good wipe around. Clean all that residue. I'm trying not to disturb the uh, the O-ring which is sitting on there still. I don't want to break the seal of that. So that is now clean in there as best as I'm going to get it anyway. My glasses are steamed up. Look, that shows you how warm it is in here. And I'll start the reassembly. And just the same as you took it apart, drop the needle valve and the float back into its little orifice. Push the pin through like that. Drop the emulsion tube through. The emulsion tube goes with the little end like that that was chamfered. That goes in, into the carb itself. The flat part there is the bit that latches up to the, uh, the, the jet when you put the jet in. So it goes in that way. Drop that in. We'll put the jet back in. We'll tighten that in. Yeah, I'm all steamed up at the moment, look. <laughs> it is no air circulation in there. Uh, and again, you haven't got to really tighten down on this. Just nip it in. And uh, woof, that's it. That's all you want to do. Little nip like that. So the carb goes on that way and we'll have the little drain off to the float bowl on this side. Put our screw back in. Yeah, as I say, I'm very dubious about using air tools or battery wrenches to tighten up things like little fragile things like carburetors. I prefer to do it by hand and feel. There we go. That should be fine. And there you go, one carb service. Let's go and put it back on. Right, I've just taken the fuel tank off of the back there and I have noticed the governor arm, someone's just got the spring there and just wrapped it around willy nilly there, as you can probably see, that's not correct at all. So all this has got to come off. As you can see, that's been well stretched, that spring, look. <laughs> uh, so that's never going to work like that. So that's going to need a new governor spring on that. So you, you never know what people do. So you can never take their word for things, you know. So there we go, that's a dodgy old spring there. Right, well, here's another old scrap one. I've just taken the, the recoil cover off. But one thing I have noticed is that the governor arm spring which was wrapped around and just tied from there up to there on this one we're working on, should actually be up here and connected there and also onto the little mechanism there. So that's where the governor arm spring should be going and uh, we'll need to replace, lucky enough as I say, I've got this as an old one so I can use this spring on our one. I've got this case off of an old one but um, one of the pins seems to have dropped out here. So I'm gonna to have to find another case. Lucky enough, I've got quite a few of these old mowers floating about. So uh, this case, I don't think it's gonna be any good because there is that pin missing there. So I will need this cable as well. This is an old cable which I can use. So that's handy. And it's always handy to have spare old lawnmower so that you can just check to see what people have done. Right, okay, let's get the bits we need off of this and maybe go and find another one of these and we'll fit it to our mower.
Okay, here's the old scrap mower now actually finished. I had to put a few more parts on it. Lucky enough, I had a spare one outside. But these little RV150 engines, they need a separate throttle control, which wasn't on this. And lucky enough, as I said, I had an old one. Let's just show you around it. Well, I hope you can agree that uh, it looks a whole lot better now than what it did. I've given the uh, blacks, the plastics, a coating of Pledge Reviver. As you know, I use this, which is a floor gloss, basically. And uh, it brings up the blacks and even the paintwork, the deck, pretty nice compared to what it was. This deck was totally faded, as you probably remember. It's not quite dry yet, but uh, I'll just show you around it anyway. And the blacks, as you know, was all faded. The handles, I've given a coat of paint as well. You didn't see me do that but I actually did that as well. But uh, as I said, I needed the extra cable. Both of these cables, one was missing there, obviously, for the, um, the, the micro switch. And also, which I didn't realize, there was a spring underneath there as well, which was missing as well, which is why this arm was flapping about a bit. The other cable, which controls the throttle and the choke, comes around and latches up to this arm down here, which you probably can't see. And uh, that has now been connected back up again. New plug in it, so I'll put that back in there like that. NGK. I did take the uh, exhaust guard off and the exhaust as well. They've both been repainted. The exhaust has been repainted with a silver heat resistant paint and this guard has been done with a black heat resistant paint. And as I said to you, the controller up here was needed and that was actually missing. So that's it, job done. Oil's been changed, brand new air filter in it as well. And that is basically it. I'm not gonna go to the extent of doing the scuff repairs and all that around there. It is what it is at the end of the day, and it's now a nice tidy mower. The blade's been sharpened as well. We'll get the funnel and just put some fuel in it. And as I say, that cap there, I think that's gonna hold up okay. So we're, we're gonna go with it. We will use this cap. But I mean, you've got to remember, this lawnmower didn't cost anything whatsoever. It's basically a scrap lawnmower, which someone had given up on. I personally don't think that this was taken to uh, a dealer because he would have just told him to scrap it with all the parts that were missing off it so i think we had a little white lie there from the chap why they don't just tell the truth i don't know it doesn't really matter does it right that should be enough we would have taken it in part exchange anyway as i said to you because there's loads of parts on it the cables alone you're looking at 14 to 20 pounds for one of these cables and we've had to put two cables on here so as i say it's worth picking these up as the uh, scrap so even if it didn't run we uh, wouldn't have had a problem with it at all. Right, that's that. Let's get it on the deck. Now I am uh, looking, as I said to you, for one of these tables that go up and down the hydraulic tables. I'm waiting to hear from someone at the moment, but uh, till then, I've got to carry on lifting them on and off. <sighs> okay, we'll have to start it in here because it is raining quite hard outside, so. Let's just get all that out of the way. So here we go. It's on choke. Lever up. How about that? Down on slow speed. Here we go, let's try and start it up again. Starts up really easy. That starts up really easy, you look at this, look. No pressure at all, look. Well, you've got to be happy with that. Absolutely fantastic. Well, there you go. This was a scrap lawnmower, which would probably have gone through a skip or a tip or whatever. And uh, we've got it going just because we had some spares with it. This was overfilled with oil, that's why it had a little bit of smoke in there, and that's why I'm about to turn it off, because uh, obviously I'm gonna let it run for about 10 or 15 minutes now, but uh, yeah, there you go. RV150 engine, throttle controls on it, brake cable needed for it, and a general 
clean up and maintenance, carb clean, stuff like that. All stuff you can do from your little workshop like I'm doing in here or your garden shed. Anyway, thanks very much. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my other videos and also click the old notification bell there and set your preferences to all. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a video. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.